Hi everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to talk about equipment needed for super macro underwater photography. Super macro is when we have greater than one-to-one -one magnification of the subject on the sensor. Remember also, it's more important about the photographer than the equipment, and it's more the photographer's patience and persistence and effort than it is the photographer's pure skill and talent. Now, I've seen some amazing photographs of super macro taken with a compact camera and various combinations of stacked close-up lenses. However, my experience is largely with an SLR camera, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. I prefer an SLR camera for super macro photography. It has a larger sensor with better quality images, and most importantly, much quicker and better autofocus. Now, of course we need a standard setup for underwater photography. An SLR camera, a housing, one or two strobes. Okay, I have a diffuser over the strobe. I prefer an angled viewfinder, especially if we're on the seafloor. We can rest our camera down and don't have to hyperextend our neck. Let me set this aside. It's almost imperative to have a focus light. This provides illumination to the subject and allows the autofocus or us to see what we're doing and focus better on the subject. Of course, we need flat ports for our macro lenses. And the most popular macro lenses are a 60 millimeter, millimeter macro and a 105 millimeter macro. We'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these two lenses in another video. However, this still allows macro photography, but not greater than one-to-one -one magnification on the sensor. So what do we need for super macro photography? Well, you know what? The extra equipment needed is really not that much. I break it down into two categories of things. One are the close-up lenses. Many people call them diopters, but a more uh, appropriate term is a close-up lens. Now this is a one, two, and four diopter close-up lens. These lenses go at the end of the lens here, and then this lens still fits inside the dome port. All right, pretty easy, very simple. The other type of lens is a wet close-up lens. This is a 10 diopter subsea wet lens, and this goes into this little attachment here. We snap this in uh, like this, tighten it, now this goes over, let's say we're going to put this over when we're shooting a 105 millimeter macro, it goes over the longer port here, and I put this on the camera, and now this is detachable. I'm more flexible during the dive. If I can't get real close to a subject and I don't necessarily want to shoot super macro, I can keep it detached. But if something allows a close approach and I want that great, fantastic super macro shot, voila, I can just snap it over. So a wet diopter is flexible and they're becoming more and more popular because you're not committed to uh, using this for the entire dive. Now, the advantages of these diopters, well, they increase magnification. They allow greater than one-to-one -one magnification on the sensor. You do not need additional strobe power, so that's pretty cool. The two big disadvantages are, one, it limits the focusing range. So instead of being able to focus maybe as close of this as this to infinity, now um, our working distance is less. We have to get closer to the subject to allow for maximum magnification and our furthest focusing range, focusing range is reduced. So we might only have a focusing range this close. So if a subject is three or five feet away, we can't capture it. So our working distance is minified and our focusing range is reduced. And that is the main problem. I especially do not like using diopters much, although I've used them, on the 60 millimeter macro because we already have a, a pretty small working distance. And now to get maximum magnification, we're so close to the subject Boy, most subjects don't allow that uh, close of approach no matter how patient we are, and it's hard to get your strobes in close enough. And this applies to either the wet or the dry diopters, of course. With a 105 millimeter mac macro, I like the close-up lenses more because we have a longer working distance, and it's, it's kind of nice to reduce the water column, bring the subject a little closer. So I, I like to the, the close-up lenses for the 105 millimeter macro. Now we have another option, and that is something called a teleconverter. A teleconverter snaps onto the other end of the lens, like so, okay? And now this goes, gets attached to the camera. Now, we need a little longer dome port. I can't use my normal 60 millimeter macro dome port with a teleconverter. I found, however, that the 105 millimeter dome port is fine. 
Now, with a teleconverter, the, uh, it also provides additional magnification, like a close-up lens. This is a 1.4x teleconverter. It allows 1.4x magnification onto the sensor if I'm at the closest working distance. It does reduce strobe, It'll reduce illumination. You lose about one f-stop of strobe power, so you need more strobe power. The good things about this is it does not limit the focusing range. We still have the normal working distance. It does not reduce our working distance. So we don't have to get abnormally so close to the subject with our 60 millimeter macro. And we can still focus out theoretically to infinity. So it does not reduce the working distance and does not limit our focusing range. I love this with the 60 millimeter. Sometimes it is harder to focus with the teleconverter and you are committed to using this for the entire dive. It's dry, okay, inside the port. I do not like the teleconverter much for the 105. It's just too hard to hold the camera still and be at a longer working distance and provide enough illumination. So for super macro photography, the extra equipment needed is really not that much. Either a dry or wet close-up lens or a teleconverter. And this gives us the capability of greater than one to one magnification of the subject on the center. Pretty cool, eh? Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful.